The Basket Weave Illusion is new to me, but the guys over at the Milwaukee Woodcraft Store introduced me to a gentleman named Jim Anderson, who's been doing it for quite some time. Jim and I spent a little time together and he showed me the ropes. You make these? Yes, a lot of them. A lot of them. And this is segmented work. Correct, all segmented and then dyed, Indian ink dyed for the patterns. So it's not individual pieces of wood, it's just big pieces of wood turned and then indexed down to little squares. Man, this is beautiful. And I recently was introduced to segmented turning. And I really liked it. I thought it was so Endless cool. possibilities. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a little bit of prep work and some time putting it all together, but I mean, super slick. You gotta like cutting and gluing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of cutting and a lot of gluing. So tell me what we've got here. Remind me, bring me back into it. Okay, for segmenting, you're mm -hmm. working with a circle. Right. So you're gonna divide the circle into how many segments you wanna have, so. That was the thing I didn't understand. Like how, how do you know how many number, like how many segments to use when you're making this? Personal preference, if, if you're turning, uh -huh. you know, here's four segments, tougher to turn. Here's six. I like to work with 12. It's close to a circle already. There's, there's a little bit of waste coming off when you're turning it. You set up your sled, start cutting away. You fine tune the, the dimensions. Uh, for 12 Tell me segments, how we figure yes. that dimension. So for 12 segments, I'm taking 360, okay. divided by 12. Right. That's gonna give me 30 degrees. I've got two sides with each segment, so you divide the 30 by two into 15. So your miter is gonna be set up to 15 degrees. And that's and it? That's it. And you just wanna just, make consistent length on the back. Right. Now you've got every size is the same. You cut 12 of them, you glue them up, and you're on Boom. your way. Yep, you bet. So every single ring is 12 segments. And, and you try to keep that? Like you don't do one ring at 12, one ring at six? Make it easy, because you've got to fine tune that joint. You want a tight glue joint. Right, right, so right, right. If you're trying to fine tune your cut every time, it's tough. So this here is in progress. Correct, right. And, and it's not glued up yet? Right, right. So right now it's in three pieces, so. And why is this finished already? Like this part here looks like it's already been turned on the yeah. inside and the outside. Just kind of easier to get at the inside of the vessel as you go. So I go up in layers. So the first four, turn it, fine tune the outside, match the inside, add two more rings, same process, and kind of build your way up until you have like two pieces. You've got a bottom and a top, slap them together, and that's going to give you this. So you're going to do this in two pieces? Correct. This so, one and then this? Right. Oh. Right. And then... And you've got a closed vessel. Right, that's hollow. Right. This is already finished on the inside, it's hollow. You bet. And you reach inside up. there and it's smooth and it's a little tougher with, you know, hollowing tools. Here your inside is already perfectly smooth and finished, so. Very cool, because yeah, the top is basically just like a bowl. You bet, right. You know, it's sort of easy to turn. Yeah, yeah. And then this, not a big deal. You're not using all those you bet. funny right, looking right. tools yeah. and stuff. And then from this, how do we get this? We'll put some beads on it. So you're gonna kind of be dividing and getting the beads on. And how are Almost you cutting the beads? Beading tools. A beading so the, tool, yeah, a okay. Beading tool, an actual beading tool. Easy nice. to use, work your way down, then you're gonna index it so divide it into sections, vertically up and down. Okay. You'll burn those lines in. And we, for that we actually use a, a, a burning, a burning tool, tool. Yeah, tool? Yep, you bet. Sweet. Yeah. And then we're gonna have these tiny little uh, squares, squares in here, right. right? And that's what we're gonna dye with a pattern. Right, and it's endless possibilities, you bet. Man, this yeah. looks super complicated. But I'm excited because I haven't used a beading tool and I've been wanting to, so this will be cool. Today's the day. All right, dude. All right. Let's get started. You got it, let's do it. So, me, you know, being a novice wood turner, right? Mm -hmm. One of the questions I have is rechucking material. On a metal lathe, I really try to minimize rechucking, uh, but if I do, you know, I can put an indicator on it and I can get it squared back up again and lined up with my machine. On a wood lathe, I really struggle with that. It, how do you deal with it? Because your sounds like you're rechucking things a lot. Well, anytime you rechuck, you always want to sweeten up the shape a little bit more because you are, you know, you're tightening up. We use wood glue blocks, so each time you tighten it up, you you're know, crushing the fibers. You, you bet yep. you're crushing the fibers. So each time, if you do have to rechuck. 
you got to sweeten it up. And you want to try to keep that to an absolute minimum. Absolutely. The number of reach outs, right? And then when you reach out, do you position it in the exact same? I don't. You don't, don't. worry about Cause, that? Because once I get to this stage, it's not getting me chucked. It's, it's on there and we're going okay. to get a finished product. So you put this on and you've already sort of sweetened it up a you little bet. bit, like you Sweeten said. Sweeten up the glue joint, get and the shape how you want it. Got the shape and you yeah. just use a scraper for that, right? You bet. Yep. Okay. Easy to do. Chips fly. So right now we're ready to set the beads? We're ready to go. Okay, show me. Teach right. me, man. You Teach it. me. So we'll run the lathe fast. We're smoothed out. I'm going to put some safety glasses on. How do you know where to start with your bead? I'm always going to start at the top and work my way down. And where I finish on the bottom, I can sweeten the bottom and kind of clean that up and make that look. Okay. How it needs to work. So, beading tool. Pretty simple. So rather than taking a skew or whatever and kind of working your way down and trying to match, this gives me cons uh, consistent piece all the way down. There's Very different cool. sizes. Pretty basic. Nice. I'm gonna use this at, at a 45 degree angle. I'll start right up at the rim. And I'm just gonna give it a couple wiggles. And if I kind of look at the top, I can kind of see when the flat disappears. Ah. I'll use that last edge, set the tool, wiggle, and go. You want to make sure you pull away from the material. And it doesn't take much. Three or four wiggles, and you keep right on moving. Super fast. Give it a roll. Give it a try. And you don't use a handle on your tool. I don't, especially for like little things. It just gives me more room to maneuver with it. Okay. 45 degree angle. How's this angle? You bet, it's good. Good, and you want to keep the tool kind of parallel as you're cutting. So we'll keep the tool rest there until we get maybe three or four more beads and then we'll move the tool rest. So we're always going to go in perpendicular to the material. So at this point, right, we've got our beads laid in. You bet. And then we burned the valleys. Correct. So now we have to divide this up so we have little squares all over the place. You bet. Now how do we go about doing that? So we're going to need to index or basically divide it in sections. So once we have our design in mind. You have to have design in mind first. Yeah, and it's going to be a repeating pattern of something. Okay. So once you get a small design, what you've got in your hand there, if you look closely, that's eight different divisions, and it's just a repeating pattern of eight. So you've got the brown, the black squares, and a repeating pattern of eight. And that's what you're doing is counting here, right. like on graph paper or whatever. You bet. You laid it's it your, out. Right. Right? And the pattern you laid out for this are two squares, a, a, a positive square yeah, that's real basic. black. You bet. And right. then a negative square that, that is not colored and the center's colored. Correct. Right? Right. right. So, so if we want those eight. squares real big, Right. You know, we might only have 24 divisions. Uh, right, right, right. If we want right. them smaller, you know, we can make that uh, 64. Or we can and something it. like this here, this is 12 because we've got six red, six black. Correct, right. right. And we're, then we're, this one here? Is uh, 16s. 16s, okay. Right. Once we have that number, you're using these. Right, so you can actually print out your own indexing wheels. This is an index wheel. Correct, so you can go on the computer, pull a graph paper, you can okay. print out whatever division you've got in for your design, print them out. They're just uh, glued onto some plexiglass here, and that's gonna be mounted behind your chuck. You've got a little transfer indexing that you put on there, and that's gonna be what you ride your pencil along and make your lines. Nice, yeah. so it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Not right. too difficult. No. 
And but you have flexibility with the wheels. So that's the key. Rather than have a commercial limited to the 96 or the 48 or depending on your lathe. Right, right. Like on the back of the chuck, right. there's a division wheel got, there or right. indexing wheel right. on the back of it. Usually. On a larger size lathe especially, right. Okay, all right. So if we want to do a pattern like this on the, the vessel we're working on, we're going to use a number that's divisible by eight. Correct. And then so we can pick whatever number we want. Right. That number is going to define the size of the square. Correct. Okay. Yep. I think I got yep. this. Good. It's a little bit of moon math here, right? A little That's bit right. of a little NASA bit. grade math here there going you go. on. Right. But I'm catching up. I'm coming up to speed All on right. this. And we already have the, the lathe set up, so we're going to go right to there and, and just start you bet. We'll making start. lines. You bet. Once we got the pencil lines in, then what? Then we'll burn them. We'll make them permanent, we'll burn them in, and then we'll be ready to start inking and getting our design. Man, this sounds easy. Yeah, you got you it. You make it easy. Ah. All right, let's do it. All right. We're ready. Okay, explain to me what you've got set up here. I recognize the wheel, right? The, the, the uh, dividing plate. You bet, so we're gonna have that mounted. It just lays right on the spindle behind the chuck. Okay. Chuck's just kind of by hand worked in there. I've got a little uh, divider here. I've got the tape here for different size lays if I want to use the same jig on different size lays. So the line is going to be right even with the center of the spindle. And I'm going to just be going one line at a time, pencil lining, marking, establishing the line, and then just So you're just met, you're marking that tape line to that line? Correct. Matching it up, little clamp, run the pencil. Then you've got a little jig here to hold the pencil in place. Right. And then you're just running it And across. you're just going to kind of let it run. Nice. You bet. And I'll just move it down to the next line. And just continue marking. Evenly divide it. Oh, very cool. I can't believe how quickly this came about. You, it's, yeah, it's I just mean, a little bit, of, out. little bit of burning and you got it. Not the a ton of there. time. No, not really. You know, we got yeah. all the beating done, yeah. all the burning's done. Right. So the bottom's done. off, everything's ready. Yeah. So the last thing is putting the pattern on. Right. And how do yeah. you do that? Well, you're just gonna kind of find a starting point. We've got uh, Indian ink pens. Uh, Fabric Castell is a real popular brand okay. from art supply stores. Uh, Copic is another popular one. Uh, if you use like a Sharpie, it's going to bleed on you. So you want to kind of stay away from those colors, even though there's a wide assortment. Okay. Uh, Fabric Castell colors come probably in about, uh, there's probably 50 different colors, but you want to have the very fine tip. And there's probably only about a dozen colors that come in a fine tip. I got gotcha. you. So, that's what, uh, you're going to start with a larger one. First, you're going to start with glasses. Yeah, I need me glasses too, so I too. can see. And then we'll kind of basically mark out the pattern. So here for the top, we'll just kind of keep just a little black loop here. So that's just, you know, four marks, four blanks, four marks. So we'll take the larger one. And kind of see where we've got a little cover up there. And we'll just... Ah, okay. Yeah. So we know that it's going to be every other four. And then we kind of cover up a little burn there. Yeah. And you just go in and you, you just start to lay out the pattern a little bit. Yeah, and usually I'm going to go on the very top line and do the whole thing. Just to kind of double check. If I need to yep. correct, I'll, I won't have uh, everything already beaded. So I'm just going to do the top one real quick here. So we've kind of established, yes, we're good. Our pattern kind of works, our design, nothing out of the ordinary there. And then you can just kind of box out that first box. So we'll just kind of go here with the black. And just 
down four, two, three, four. Simple there, kind of go over here, we'll just box this out. Another color, and you know, for the basket, if you're going to kind of go with more of a basket Native American thing, they have a sanguine color, which is kind of a off brownish, orangey ish. And you just kind of block in here the first match with that color. And you're going to go to the fine pips, and you can kind of get down into the valleys. Now, how long would it take you to do that pattern on this whole A uh, Couple hours, maybe. Really? Yeah, at the most, probably. So then, and then once you kind of get your pattern on there, then it, I always like to kind of darken the valleys. The valleys. And I think it just gives the piece more of a finished look. Makes it pop a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And you know, these are the top three or four that didn't get burned when we wired because of the slope. Right. So just going to kind of go around and continue that way. When you're right. done with these, do you put a sealer on them or anything? Or? I use just like a Krylon matte spray finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In there that dries like in minutes and you can put, I usually put like three or four coats on and it just kind of sets the ink. Man, there she is. Thank you. Nothing to it. Thank you, you so much. I cannot you believe mm -hmm. how you made this project. You know, like you broke it all down like that. It's a, it's a collaboration today. Little steps. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. And really, we just got to sit down and finish filling yeah, these in and, and it's, it's done. Yeah, you stick know? it up on the shelf. And it'll look just like this. Yeah. This is we'll beautiful, man. Or whatever. Beautiful work. Thank you. Thanks again. Enjoyed it. All right, I thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank you.